Uh, so today I'm going to be talking to you about Triton compiler. Uh, let's get started. So roughly um, what I'm going to be talking about is what is Triton? Why did we create this tool? What it can be used for? Uh, then I'll talk about how it could be integrated in a ML compiler stack. And then finally, I'll briefly talk about what's under the hood and um, how the compiler manages to simplify users' work. So what is Triton? So Triton is a Python DSL. It is meant to be used to write machine learning kernels. Originally, it was strictly used for GPU kernels, but it is slowly growing to support any kind of hardware uh, used for machine learning. It could be CPU, it could be ASICs, um, anything. And the goal of Triton is to allow researchers with no GPU experience or no GPU, like deep GPU knowledge, to be able to write high performance code. If you see the graph at the bottom of the slide, that's really the place where Triton like, aims to be, which is with a low amount of development, uh, you can actually get really close to peak performance. Of course, there'll always be other language like CUDA or assembly language that will allow you to get as much or more performance, but you usually would need a lot more knowledge about hardware and spend a lot more time on it. So why, why did we need this new language? So if we look at what's available out there um, to be able to, to program machine learning on different types of hardware, so there is PyTorch, which allows you to easily map different kind of operations onto hardware. And it's, it's very easy with that to get high performance out of your hardware. The problem is that you have very little control. If something is not available in the existing set of ops, you kind of, uh, you're stuck and your only solution is to go back to the other extreme, which is something like writing CUDA or writing PTX uh, or even directly assembly. And the problem with that is to write those language, you need to actually be an expert of the hardware and writing high efficient kernel in those languages can be very tricky. So really Triton tries to be a middle ground here and allow users to uh, write high efficient kernels with a lot of controls, but without having to care about the tiny details or like the yeah, the, the details of the hardware and how to get performance on specific hardware. And really, the, the hard part of the design is to find this sweet spot. And uh, the way Triton, like the way Triton was designed is really finding this, uh, this abstraction sweet spot, which is what do you want to expose to users and what do you want the compiler to do? Compilers are productivity tools and really um, here, Triton allows you, like the, the goal of Triton is to have the compiler do the work you don't want to do for you, but still leaves you control on things like algorithms, any like, uh, knob uh, you want to use to be able to do tuning. Um, so really, Triton is, is in between CUDA and Torch in this way that you, you still get to write your algorithm, you still get to control your types, and uh, you still need to, to decide if you want intermediate values to be in a certain type, you control all your precisions, but you don't have to care about how to handle shared memory, how to use tensor cores if your target has tensor core, how to handle the load coalescing very well so that you have good memory access patterns, which are things that people constantly do when they are writing GPU kernels. You always have to worry about those of figuring out, okay, what is going to be the layout of my intermediate data, et cetera. And that, the compiler will do for you. So let's look at an example um, of a kernel. So this is an example of a softmax kernel. It works, it's a, it's a copy paste of a, a working solution. And uh, the, int the first interesting thing is that it's, it's relatively short. If you were to write the, the, same, CUDA, like the same kernel in CUDA, it would actually not fit into that slide and uh, it would require significantly more efforts. A uh, few interesting things we can note about um, 
the language is that, uh, so there are like, for instance, um, yeah, there are like, you, you get control over how you're gonna distribute the work on your, on your machine, thanks to those program IDs. You can see that you still control your memory accesses because you have access to pointers and uh, you can load a big block of data based on some raw pointers. And then the compiler will, under the hood, decides what is the best way to map that into your hardware and uh, how to do the coalescing, how to do everything so that this load is gonna be efficient and is gonna get distributed onto the different threads and warp of your GPU, uh, but you don't have to worry about that. Same thing, at the bottom we can see there is a, a reduction operation and in general, that will implicitly use shared memory, but you don't have to worry about it. The compiler will do the work of, um, of making sure you pick the, the best implementation for that and use the shared memory for you. So that was. So after that, I'm going to talk about how, how Triton could be used in a typical compiler, uh, ML compiler stack. So Triton itself can be used to write kernels and that is in itself a, a normal use and that's what a lot of people use it for. Uh, but it can also be integrated uh, into a, a full graph compiler stack. So here's usually how typical graph compilers are implemented. So you'll have like the model uh, front end and then you'll have a graph compiler that will break the graph into kernels and then kernels are implemented using any of the existing language, and then um, those kernels are being executed on hardware. So Triton very naturally fits at the kernel level because, as, as I mentioned, it's, it is really in between this graph, like this op level, and this, uh, this kernel implementation, this kernel abstraction. So it gives you a very easy, it gives you a very natural uh, lowering from, from a, graph, uh, a graph representation, and it, uh, it allows actually a simpler implementation of the graph representation because you don't have to, in one shot, generate a perfect kernel. You can just uh, generate the Triton part and then the Triton compiler will do the, the heavy lifting of figuring out how it's going to get mapped efficiently to the hardware. And then the other thing that uh, where Triton can be is it can be used as a custom up language to complete um, things like PyTorch because again, if you're stuck and something is not implemented in PyTorch, um, adding custom up is your, is your only solution to be able to do what you, you need to do. Um, so let's look a little bit at the, the compiler architecture. This is very high level way to, uh, to look at uh, the architecture of Triton. So Triton um, is really architected as a old school compiler front end, mid end, back end. Uh, the interesting parts here are uh, those two blocks, Triton IR and, I guess you, yeah, Triton IR and Triton GPU IR, which are the intermediate IR of, uh, of Triton and that's really where a lot of the magic happens. Um, the other interesting thing you can see here is that uh, Triton IR really allows you to target um, different, uh, different hardwares because Triton IR itself is completely agnostic of the, of the targets. Uh, so if we zoom in um, on the interesting part, which is basically what happens between Triton IR and the final, um, and the, the LLVMIR, which is the final target, Basically, what the compiler does is it first takes Triton IR. Again, Triton IR is pretty much one-to-one -to, -one to the language. And then the first thing it's going to do is going to associate uh, a layout which describes how the tensor is going to get distributed onto threads and warp. And that's really the, the, core, um, the core mechanics of the compiler because based on those layouts, uh, there are multiple paths that are going to change those layouts and um, to, to be able to generate something that is going to efficiently map onto the hardware. So we would have passed like coalescing, which will try to pick a layout so that load store coalescing is going to be efficient. We will try to uh, use layouts that fits well into TensorCore, if the machine has TensorCore, 
and then we would try to avoid any layout conversions, and then applying a bunch of typical compiler passes, and then just a conversion from that to LLVM um, based on, on analysis. Um, yeah, so that's, that's very high level, but that's kind of the, the way the, the compiler works. And yeah, so that, that's about all I wanted to tell you. Uh, we are uh, being, like Triton is being developed fully in the open source, and contributors are very welcome. We have monthly community meeting uh, if you want to join. Thank you. Uh, I mean, yeah, that, I guess uh, it's not like, like dead code elimination would typically run multiple times in the compiler. That's something for CSE. It's really the, uh, yeah, I guess I, I didn't put it multiple times, but it, it would indeed uh, being run multiple times. Um, so there is uh, in tree now that, I mean, it's a, it's a different repo, but it hooks into the, the Triton repo. Uh, there is a conversion to Linalg, and then, um, there are, um, I think they're mostly uh, downstream and not open, but there are, like, people use it to, to convert Linux to, to their uh, hardware, which I think is mostly accelerators, but again, because this is not public work, I don't know all the details. That's a good question, then. Right now, yes. Uh, so there is an effort to try to make it more usable. Uh, it is currently not the case, and uh, Yes, the, the goal would be really to, to have a, a common Triton GPUR because most of it is, is reusable. Uh, but of course, such, such design is, is not trivial to do. Uh, yes? Could you say a couple of words about the Linalg folks? Uh -huh. What is it? Uh, so Linalg is a, this MLIR dialect um, that is meant to represent structured uh, operations. And um, yeah, I'd, so some people believe it's a better representation to target things uh, like uh, accelerators and things like that. So and some backends are based on that. Is uh, it, linear algebra it is linear algebra, but uh, yeah, it's very specific. Uh, it's it's really a MLIR that like it it can represent things like yeah reductions, um, contractions, uh, things like that. Uh, no, it's no, it's not there as as, as far as I know. Oh, yeah. Yes. So the GPU IR backend is not common. How portable are the kernels? The kernels? So kernels are portable. Uh, most likely, you would need to retune, but there's nothing in the kernel that is uh, target specific. Uh, and again, Triton IR itself is is very much agnostic of hardware. But if most likely, if you take a kernel that works well on a target you may have to retune it for it to work well on a, on a different one. How, how effort intensive is that cost? It's not something a lot of people are doing um, at the time, so I can't, I can't give you much details. But in theory, it's not important. Like, and so Triton has, um, has some, some code to do auto-tuning. Uh, so it may be just like you, you, it just works because the auto-tuning will take part of uh, adjusting the parameters that needs to be adjusted. So in the best case scenario, there's nothing to do. Again, of course, it depends on case by case. Um, mm -hmm. So the auto-tuning happens at the Python IR level? It happens before. Actually, it's at the Triton language level, so it, it's all in the Python level. Um, you would instantiate a bunch of different, um, yeah, like uh, Python level um, kernels. And that would then lower to, to Triton IR, but it's it's all in Python land. Is that meant for GPUs, but for the other accelerators? No, it's just so you need to fill out uh, a bunch of combinations you want to try in your auto tuner, uh, but there's nothing specific to one platform or another. And the knobs are just for the typing and the blocking. Right? It's really the knobs are kind of up to you because you again, like the user is in control of the the kernel. So for instance, if you write a matmol kernel, right, you'll, you'll have to decide what block size you want to use, et cetera. So you write your kernel and you write your, your knobs. Uh, the compiler is kind of agnostic to that. Yes? Uh -huh. Oh, people do, yeah. Um, it, it, yeah, uh, I don't have a super clear, I mean, if you are not a CUDA expert, I would say, yeah, using Triton is a much better deal. Uh, 
if you, yeah, uh, it, it really depends on what you're trying to do and how much time you're willing to spend on, on writing and optimizing your kernel. Okay, yeah, then, yes. No, currently no. That's one thing we've been considering, uh, but it's, yeah, it's not a. It's a feature that has a fairly broad impact. So right now we're still not sure whether or not it should be part of the language. No, um, no. So usually as a, at the language level, you would expose only the like, global memory kind of. So. I, that would be a single. But then you could have under the hood like some, um, some, some. Um, yeah, some like uh, private memory or some like uh, I guess like similar to GPU shared memory, some accelerated memory that the compiler can uh, take advantage of. Um, but I mean, it, it's, at the language level, it's really just pointers. So having multiple memory space shouldn't be extremely hard to to plug in. It's, there's there's nothing really making any assumptions there. Yeah. 